Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and today I have a club remix card. I like to take the Spellbinders clubs for the current month and remix them with older club kits as well because I know sometimes they just get stuck in our cabinets and we don't use them. So this one is a shaker jar and you can take the top off the jar and these little shaker pieces come out. You could write a message on the back of some of them because they're a little bit bigger. I love this. If you do not subscribe to the clubs, there are lots of tips in here for ways you might do this with supplies that you already have. There is also a free printable that coordinates with those clubs, but also with any products that have a theme of color, art, flowers, or any word dyes. So we have circle sentiments, rectangles, and strip sentiments. Those strip sentiments also come in white text on black, which I love. And then the small die of the month for Spellbinders. So this is in August. It's available at the club discounted price until the 27th. It has a bunch of word dies like hello, miss you, thinking of you, uh, hugs enclosed. And so I created a bunch of sub sentiments you could print out to pair with them. You could also pair these with any other word dies you have that have these sentiments on them or with other free printable kits from my channel that have the same sentiments, okay? We're all about using what we have. Then at the end of the kit, there is a card sketch with all the measurements you need. And actually I added another page because we also made an interlocking gatefold card and it includes all of those instructions as well. If this is helpful for you, you like the free sentiments, you like the cutting guides and instructions that you can print out and save, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified every time there's a new free kit. So for this card, I'm using the large die of the month. It has these huge florals in it and I love that. But really, you could adapt this and put anything in it. You could put different florals, little critters, stamped images, right? This is just a method. This is the small die of the month for August and we're gonna use the Miss You sentiment. You could use any word dies. If it has a shadow that combines your two words, even easier. Then because this is our club remix, I'm pulling in the January large die. This is the Honey Bee Jar. It's still available, I will link to it. But when we get to that part of the card, we'll talk about substitutions. I also remixed the small die from February, but really just because it had some smaller florals. So this is, I don't even know what kind of flower this is, maybe a peony, okay? And I am just doing some quick ink blending. If I'm gonna make a card like this one, <laughs> that was sort of involved, uh, I'm gonna go all out, right? I want all the pieces to look their best, but honestly, these dyes are beautiful and you could skip the ink blending. You might choose to use different shades of pink cardstock, different shades of purple cardstock. There's lots of ways to go about that. I just get really excited when there's an idea like this in my brain. And so I'm just kind of going through the steps. And as I'm assembling these flowers, I'm also kind of thinking ahead. It gives me that time to think about the structural issues of how do we make a jar where things come in and out and how do I make sure everything fits? And then once I've glued it together, what happens if it doesn't work the way that I want it to work? My friends, Parts of this came together really beautifully and I have a little hack in the middle that gave me room to adjust. Um, and then parts of it, I had to tear the card apart. <laughs> You'll see that too. So I'm gonna walk you through that process as well. So, so far I have assembled this flower the way you would if you were putting it on any card, but we're gonna make this a shaker bit. And so, especially for that stem, I need it to be a lot sturdier, okay? I don't want, like a single layer of cardstock to get bent or damaged. The stem on my piece is 80 pound cardstock. So I'm stacking up, I think it's four layers. Um, if you were using heavier weight cardstock, you could maybe do three, but this was enough where I feel like if it's shaking in and out and something hits the stem, it's not gonna buckle, okay? So I am just gluing the extra pieces behind the flower we made, the completed flower. And then before I glue that last one on, I'm tracing the bottom of it onto the biggest part of the flower. And I'm gonna trim that off because we're creating this sort of bump out on the bottom. See that? Where all that stem is and I need my pieces of the flower to match the depth and thickness of it. So I just trace with my pencil and it doesn't have to be super pretty. We're gonna hide it, okay? No one's gonna see that. So I'll just glue the other pieces on. There is a tiny piece that goes into the middle on the top so on the first one, I just put a little piece of tape. 
behind that. And that way it's really held in there and I don't have to wait for glue to dry <laughs> uh, to hold that little piece in place just by the edges. Like that's, I'm not doing that. All right, so I am just layering up one more layer on that stem. I'm trying to decide, is it thick enough? Is it sturdy enough? If there's extra glue on that stem, I just tap it off on the back of my hand so I don't have a big sticky mess, especially because I don't want that glue going onto the front of it and then it looks kind of yucky. Once everything is flush, and that took a little maneuvering because I have some 100 pound cardstock and I have some 80 pound cardstock, but just kind of by feel, right? Trust yourself. And then I'll put the last petal layer on top to cover up the back of that stem and no one can see where we trimmed everything off. And that will finish our first flower. You can do this with anything. Honestly, these flowers are a little fiddly for this particular technique. But if you were using stamped and colored images, right? There's one die to cut out the image. Just cut it a handful of times and glue them together. And then you have this bigger, thicker piece. We're gonna get to some smaller blooms that we're adding in here and it's no big deal, right? You just kind of layer up one die <laughs> a handful of times, okay? So I wanted to show you this and I'm just gonna show you pieces of this second flower. It's really the same thing, but this part, is really helpful for me. If I have like a real small space I need to get rid of, I'll just use a hole punch, like an office supply hole punch to remove that. Here, there's this little, I don't know what that is. Maybe that's the stamen like popping up out of the top of the flower. So I used my hole punch and then I can trim just a little bit around it, but trying to create a U shape that's that small with my scissors, that's a pain. So this is how I get around it. Once I sort of get that center piece cut out of the top, then I can start gluing everything together. Then I'll use the same technique that I used on the first flower to trace along the bottom of the petals just to remove where it would overlap the stem. Then I'll start stacking up the stem on the back, right? Just like we did with the first one. When I'm done with that, I can glue my stacked up petals behind that and they fit together like puzzle pieces, like kind of wonky puzzle pieces because I cut them myself, but it works just fine and we're covering it up in the end with one more set of the petals and then that flower is done as well, okay? Again, remember, you can do this with anything. It doesn't have to be these dies and a lot of your options might be a little easier, a little faster than that one. So these are the smaller blooms that I'm using. I've already stacked up the white ones and then the colored ones, I'm just adding a top layer on there. So they're three thick. If you have smaller pieces, I highly recommend stacking them up a little bit at least because if it's single layer, they can get damaged, they can get wedged behind other things and kind of lost. And so this is how I keep everything kind of the same weight. The pink and blue blooms are from the August large dye. And the center piece of those goes on this die, and then it also goes on one of the other florals. So just be aware of that. We're gonna make this Miss You, and I'm having to do some partial die cutting because the words are separate. Again, if you had different word dies, uh, and maybe you had one that said Miss You, and it came together, and it had a shadow where it was together, that would be so much easier. But if you don't have that, here's how you can stretch what you have. This is the shadow die for Miss, and I taped it onto printer paper. I'm lining up the top plate of my die cutting machine so that it does not cover the very bottom edge of that die. And when it comes out, it will cut the top where my plate was covering, but not the bottom. I'm laying the Miss You on my printer paper just to get my spacing. It's nested into the cut we've already made. I need to know where the U shadow die goes. And once I get that on there, I will remove the words and then I'll do some partial die cutting of the bottom of that word. So I'm just gonna arrange it on my plate and then grab my top plate. I'm gonna cut the bottom so it's not covering the very top of the U. Okay, so now I have Miss U in my printer paper and I'm just gonna take my scissors to connect those two cuts, right? It didn't have to be perfect, we can clean it up later. Now I have a template, right? That's just printer paper. So I'm gonna lay this on top of several pieces of white cardstock and I'm gonna cut with a guide. It is still partial die cutting, but my friends, once you've done it once and you kind of know where your plate needs to go, this went very quickly. It took me five minutes maybe, okay? 
So I just keep laying it on top of these squares of heavyweight cardstock. We need to stack this up just like we did the florals. I had already done one or two when I realized I really should tape this onto my printer paper and tape it on there really well because then there's less fiddling. This next one, you can see how quickly I pull it off of one, put it on the other, cover it with my plate, leaving the bottom edge hanging out. And it's like any other die cut, right? It's a pretty straight edge on the bottom as well, which was helpful. Once I have all my layers cut using the miss, I'm gonna carefully remove that die. The dies overlap, so I can't keep them both on there at the same time. Then I'm lining this up with the cut we already made. I could have left it on there. That was the last one I did. I only needed to remove the die from the top, not the paper itself. And then I can fit the U right into the template we've made. Honestly, this is where the template is the most valuable. I go to stack these up. I need them all to be the same height and width so that they don't look all wonky and I'm not trying to trim a bunch of stuff to clean it up with my scissors. So I really, really like this method with the printer paper. I'm gonna pull that off and then I just transfer it to the next one. The die is taped to my paper and I wiggle my paper until it lines up with the cut on the top. I'll lay it on my plate, cover up the bottom of the U, leave the top edge hanging out, and I will run that through my machine. Once I have all my layers cut out, I'll just take my scissors in there and there's a little bit of cardstock on the side of each where I do need to clean that up with my scissors, but you guys, no one can really tell, right? It's a tiny little cut. I'll make one of them look really nice. And then as I'm stacking up the other ones, I can clean them up or trace around it to make sure that they all look the same. Then I started gluing them together. In the end, I think this is four layers thick. This last one was my practice template. So the Miss and the U are separated. That's fine. Once I glue them together, no one can tell. And I'll just sandwich that one in the middle. I'm not cutting something that doesn't get used. So when I go to put the Miss U on there off camera, I stacked those up twice. Some of our florals are really thick and I like that the weight of this will kind of match those. When I get to the dot on the eye, I always stack those straight onto the shadow layer. I just find this easier. It's so small, right? I have a handful of times tried to glue those and hold them in my hand, but I tell you what, they end up stuck somewhere and I can't find them. Those are all the pieces for our shaker and I love them. The colors and the textures, the weight of them. And we're gonna put them in this jar. So the jar has a die that goes around the outside and there's a die that will cut like liquid for the inside. I cut the outside frame out of some blue cardstock and some acetate. I nested the outside and inside pieces together to cut a bunch of frames. I'm gonna emboss this using the crisscross motif. This was the 3D embossing folder from November of last year. And that will just give it a little bit of texture on the background and I love, love, love that. I'm keeping that little piece that goes in the top. It cuts a little hole up there, hang on to that. Then I'm bringing in my large blending brushes and what I thought was gonna be a very light blue ink, but I think there was just still a bunch of ink on my brush. Thankfully, this brush has bristles that are so soft that you can easily fade into a much lighter blend as you move up your paper. So there's my frame and you can see there's a bunch of white cardstock on there because I had an idea for the mechanism and it didn't work. So ignore the frame that's on there. We're gonna simplify actually. We need to remove the top of the jar since we want things to be able to move in and out of it. And we're just stacking up layers of cardstock to create the frame. So I'm tracing with my pencil. Some people might be able to freehand a cut that would work pretty well. I am not that person, okay? So I traced it until I thought it looked good. I wanna make sure at the top that there is definitely enough cardstock to create some stability. And I'm hanging on to all of my pieces. If you don't have the honeybee jar, you don't wanna get the honeybee jar, that's okay. Um, there's also a large die, it's the pins and needles jar that came out in April with the sewing stuff that would work to make something very similar. You do kind of have to cut the frame. It's mostly cut, but you have to connect the pieces. Or you could use any basic shape die. You might have to get a little bit creative uh, to create a lid, but you only need one, maybe two layers of the lid. But whatever shape you use, you need part of it to be missing at the top, right? Maybe it's a circle. Maybe it's one of the other really awesome basic shapes that Spellbinders has come out with in the past year. I'm obsessed. And I glue the frames together. 
Normally, if I was making a shaker, I would use foam tape. This one just happens to be really thin, and so I don't have foam tape this thin. That would absolutely simplify things. Maybe I'm using some nested dies, the mirrored arch labels or the notched corner frames, and then instead of gluing the layers together, you could use foam tape around the edges. Gluing them together like this means I have this opportunity. This is removable adhesive. It's what I use for my emergency sentiments. And I am adding that all around this set of frames. It's four thick. And I'm gonna try to make sure I've removed all of the stickiness from the edges, right? I only want it on that top layer. Then I'm gonna add another set of frames that I have glued together. So this is like eight or nine thick at this point and I have a cheat. When I glue this onto my card, right, we sort of ink blended up on that blue piece, ignore the frame that's already there, it is irrelevant at this point, but I'm removing all of the extra stickiness and I'm gonna glue this onto that backer piece. And I know that when I go to glue my acetate on top, if I don't like the way this looks or if I did something wrong, I can peel those two layers apart and get into the inside and make adjustments. I cannot tell you how amazing this was. The first time I put this together, I was trying to create a hinge that would flip, like rotate up off the top, and it didn't work, okay? And so I peeled off the frames in the middle first every time I tried to fix that mechanism. So, so far we have the back of our jar and the walls but I also need the acetate and then the pretty piece that goes on top. And that's what I have here. The oval comes out on its own. So I'm just removing the back of the mouth of the jar. Then I will put this together like I would any other shaker. I like Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive when I'm making a shaker because I think it grabs a little better onto acetate, but I have a few other tricks as well. So I'm gonna go all around the outside and then I'm gonna tap off the excess glue onto some scratch paper. I don't want that glue oozing out and then I have glue that shows on my acetate, it's kind of yucky. Then I will lay it down on my acetate. I like it on a black, background, I feel like I can see the contrast a little better than I can on say white. Then I have just a little bit of curling on the top of the acetate. I think I had my shim in when I cut it. And so I could avoid that <laughs> by removing the shim. Then I'll lay all my pieces into my jar. I have my two big flowers, my miss you. I just am kind of seeing where I want everything. Remember we had that cheat layer and quite frankly, I'm going to leave it in. I could, when I'm done, remove the temporary adhesive and add glue to it. But I like the idea that when I give this away, I can let them know, hey, you can open it up and arrange those pieces so they look really pretty when you put it on display. Then glue all around that top edge, okay? So only on the cardstock. And I will take my finger and kind of go around and smooth out all of that glue. This is kind of like tapping it off on the scratch paper but because I have my pieces sitting in there, that's not really an option, or at least not in the same way. Then I let it sit, right? I like to give it a minute, minute and a half to let that glue get really tacky. It will grab faster and it's less likely to ooze out even if I missed a spot with my finger. I set that aside and now I'm working on the stopper, the lid. I have some craft foam that I stole from my children, just regular white craft foam. And I am going to glue that little oval that fell out of the top of our jars onto the craft foam. I'm also gluing one of the pieces that we trimmed away. You could technically skip this part, but I think the stopper works better when you do it this way. If you were using a circle, if you were using the mirrored arch labels, you would need to create a stopper, but you could do it essentially the same way. I'm taking that other piece from the top of the jar that we trimmed away and I'm butting that right up against the oval. Part of this is going to go inside the jar, but part of it's attaching to the lid. So we're working on the part that attaches to the lid right now. Taken two ovals and stacked those up. And then I'm going to take two of those pieces that were right above the oval and I'm going to glue those together. This was a sticky mess. <laughs> I tell you what, I had glue everywhere, but I was watching craft roulette and having fun and that's living the dream, right? If you're working with the pins and needles jar or a different shape altogether, you wouldn't necessarily have these thin sort of fiddly pieces. What we need is a piece at the very top of our stopper that is 
thicker, has more layers than the bottom of the stopper. So that's what's happening. I just glued those together sideways. That was totally unnecessary. Very satisfying. Then I have the lid of our jar. Some of the details of this lid mean it has little cuts in it. So I'm using some tape and just covering those up on the one that goes in the back. You won't see the tape. You could use any tape here. This is Micropore medical tape. It's made out of paper and so it takes glue a little bit better than say a scotch tape. I'm gonna add glue all over it. When that glue dries and hardens, it lends strength to the cardstock. This is 100 pound cardstock. I like that there are two of them because this is the piece that people pull on. I want it to stick together really well. This is where it all comes together. At the top, I am going to layer these extra ovals, the extra part of the mouth onto the very, very top. It's all still on this big old sheet of foam. You don't need near that much foam, but it was easier to assemble it this way before I start cutting things apart. On the back, I am adding just a plain old piece of scrap white cardstock. It's probably 100 pounds. You need to pay attention to the opening of your jar here. I know mine is really deep. If it wasn't, I might not use as heavy weight of cardstock, or I might only use cardstock and skip the foam. I'm gonna trim around that top edge. I want it to be the same shape as the cardstock that's on there. And I can start figuring out how much to trim away of the rest of it. I can pretend like I'm drawing this with a pencil just to show you, but really I am not capable of eyeballing things and then <laughs> having a cut that looks good. So I am taking my time with this. You can see the back of the stopper when you pull it out. Most people won't look, it's not that interesting. So my primary goal is just for these to be kind of symmetrical. I'm using my giant spellbinder scissors for this. They are the sharpest scissors I have ever owned. <laughs> it's gonna cut very easily through two layers of cardstock and some kids fun foam. So I'm just following that line and curving it around and then I will check it with my jar for two things here. Does it fit side to side and is it a slightly snug fit for width? And the width is good, right? I stuck it in there and it's not just falling out, but now I need to trim away some more of this stopper. I probably need an inch, three quarters of an inch that fits inside the jar for that to work really nicely. And there you can see once I trimmed away some of the bottom, which was also some pieces that were sticking out too far to the sides, that works beautifully. I layered up that oval on the back of the mouth and that has more depth. And so it doesn't fall all the way into our shaker. I'm only adding my glue on those two top pieces, the ones that have more depth than the rest. Use your best glue here. I like that I've got a good quarter inch, okay? And I'm gonna smooth that all along. It looks like I just took off all the glue, but I didn't. There's still a thin layer and I'm gonna add that onto the top of my jar and I'm gonna press firmly and I'm gonna give that some time to dry and set up before I mess with it too much. Reverse tweezers are really, really helpful here. They just keep that pressure on there even more than adding weights to it. So I'm gonna start finishing the card part of our jar. I have just a piece of white cardstock that I've cut using the outside of the jar. I'm adding some tape to that oval like we've been doing. And then we can add this to the back of the jar. We embossed that blue panel on the inside of the jar so it has lots of texture. And that embossing can weaken the cardstock as well. So this is just another layer for stability. I am adding glue all over. It looks like a ton, but I just wanna make sure it's nice and covered. Again, when that glue dries, it hardens and it lends strength to the card. Then I'll just flip this over and layer it up to make sure that it's on there nice and straight and we're not gonna see any peeking around to the front of the card. At this point, I was really excited. I'm like, well, I'm almost done. I'm super excited about the pieces in here. So I go to start shaking them out and they're not coming out. There's just not enough space in there. Too tight between the acetate and then the walls of the cardstock and I'm having trouble even putting them back in after I managed to shake them out and I was like, okay, let's peel her back open. Remember that removable adhesive. This gives me room to adjust. Created a couple more frames just like we did before. This is two or three thick. Do it by feel, it depends on how thick your shaker pieces are. I'm gonna tap that off on the side and I'm adding it 
to the side of the jar that doesn't have the removable adhesive. Yes, some of it transfers from one side to the other, but one side has most of it, and I'm gonna leave that side alone. Then I can go ahead and arrange my pieces, and add that top layer of the jar with the acetate back on. I am still just using that removable adhesive. I wanna make sure everything's gonna work well. If you created too much space then, so that your lid isn't snug, you can add another layer of cardstock to the very back of it. This is why I kept all of my pieces when I was making those frames. So this new set of layers is working really well. Things are moving in and out of that jar much, much better, and I'm super pleased. Here's our jar lid, and you can see the foam is not attached at the bottom of that lid, only at the top. And that lets that foam and cardstock slide into the jar fits snugly just like it should. I have one more jar that I'm putting in my scoreboard and I'm just gonna create a score line right at the bottom of the mouth of the jar. Then I can add this onto the back of my card. So I'm only adding glue onto that top piece and then around the back of the mouth. And this will create like a flap so I can open and close this and so that it can stand up on display. I will also add some glue and put the oval back into the top, just like we've been doing with the other layers. I did a quick check to make sure it would stand up. If it wasn't standing well, you could trim a little sliver off the back just to flatten that out, and that helps too. Here's our finished card, my friends. I put this in an A6 envelope, just so it has a little more room, stands up on display, the top comes off, things are shaking out beautifully, right? Nothing is catching, it doesn't feel like they're all squished in there. I hope this video inspires you to create a large shaker like this. I will also link to the message in a bottle card I did in a different remix where I used some five millimeter foam to cut a very thin frame, which is just another option. I love that one too. While I didn't use the free printable in this card, I will link to all of the other videos below along with the supplies that I've used. If you are not a subscriber, go ahead and click that button and ring the bell to be notified every time there's a new free kit.